let's talk about adrenal insufficiency, okay? The adrenal glands are your body's stress glands. The more stress you're dealing with, whether it's mental stress or emotional stress, digestive distress, or any physiologic stress, uh, if you're just going into surgery or just coming out of surgery, if you got diabetes, if you have anything biochemically wrong with your body, your adrenal glands are going to kick in to provide you with emergency energy. But over time, your adrenal glands are going to get pooped. And they're not going to be able to kick in with emergency energy. DHEA is one of the things that they'll give you when you're dealing with adrenal insufficiency issues. But if you don't take care of the underlying stressors, the DHEA is not going to help you. So you got to take care of what's going on underneath that's causing the adrenal stress in the first place. Now, if it's an emotional issue or a mental issue or psychological issue, those need to be uh, those need to be worked on. You need to figure that out, and that's something that's above and beyond the scope of this program. So I'm not going to go there, but just understand that any mental, uh, emotional, or psychological issues need to be taken care of. However, there's wonderful things that you can do from a physiologic standpoint to take care of the adrenal glands. First thing. Always the digestive system. If you have anything going on in the digestive system, leaky gut syndrome, things are getting into your body through the digestive system inappropriately, foods are not getting processed correctly, if you're taking in foods that you're allergic to or intolerant to, all of this is going to put an undue burden on the adrenal glands. And so you need to take care of that that, that factor, the digestive factor. Use probiotics, use digestive enzymes, eliminate problem foods, do a food journal or food diary so you can see where your problem foods are, and that's going to be the digestive component. The second thing that will make your adrenal glands, that will eventually cause adrenal insufficiency and, and make your adrenal glands overwork, is hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Now, low blood sugar typically occurs after high blood sugar. What ends up happening with lots of uh, ingestion of refined carbohydrates and, and sweet foods and sugars as we go on this high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster where your blood sugar spikes and then your body pulls the, blood sugar, the, the sugar out of your blood and then your blood sugar drops. Well, when your blood sugar drops, you feel tired and low energy. Your adrenal glands interpret that as an emergency and they will kick in. So getting off of that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster is very important and there's lots of ways to do that. One of the easiest and most important is obviously to restrict or limit your intake of refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, and sweet foods. Don't try to use willpower. Up your protein and up your essential fatty acids, and you'll notice that you're gradually craving less and less sugar and less and less sweet foods. So first it might take a little bit of willpower, but as the protein and essential fatty acids kick in, it'll be easier and easier for you to do that. So increase your protein, increase your essential fatty acids, get on the ultimate EFAs from longevity, and gradually wean yourself off of cereals and breads and pasta and rice and potatoes and corn and fruit juices and candies and cakes and cookies and brownies and all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's very important. Correct digestive issues, number one. Get on the probiotics. Get on the digestive enzymes. Uh, reduce your or eliminate your intake of problem foods. Reduce your or eliminate your intake of sugars and sweets so you get off that hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, high blood sugar roller coaster. And then eat more protein and more essential fatty acids. Then you can start to target the adrenal glands specifically. Now your adrenal glands have uh, one super emergency condition that they're always looking out for, and that is low oxygen. So the more, uh, the, or I should say, the less oxygenation you're getting, the less oxygen you're getting in your system, the more active your adrenal glands are going to be, which is to say practicing deep breathing techniques is one of the most effective. It might be the most effective way to reduce the load on your adrenal glands and regain adrenal strength. Simple, deep breathing techniques. Practice them on a daily basis. Ideally, practice them on an hourly basis. Just taking two long, slow, deep breaths every hour, and that means deeply in and powerfully exhaling out, can go a long way towards restoring adrenal health. Just that alone. Then there's great nutritional uh, uh, nutritional supplements that you can take for the adrenal glands. We've been talking about vitamin B12. It's very, very important for adrenal health. Uh, all the B vitamins are important for adrenal health. Vitamin B5 is especially important for adrenal health. You'll get all these in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but you've got to make sure that your digestive system is working correctly for you to get the maximum benefit out of the vitamin B12, as we've been talking about today. 
So get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You may want to get vitamin B12 injections if you think that you have any digestive issues. And then uh, there's a couple other nutrients that are also very important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin C. In fact, uh, vitamin C is very important for adrenal health. In fact, there's more vitamin C and there's more vitamin E in the adrenal glands than almost any other system in the body. So both vitamin C and vitamin E are very, very important for adrenal health. Uh, 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 Zinc is also very important for adrenal health. Get on 50 milligrams a day of zinc. In fact, zinc is, as I've said many times, is a must-have nutritional supplement. It's not an option, and zinc is very important for the adrenal glands. So you've got lots of wonderful places to work there, Heather. If you're taking DHEA and you're not focusing on digestive wellness, if you're taking DHEA and you're going through that uh, high blood sugar, low blood sugar uh, roller coaster, if you're uh, taking DHEA but you're not focusing on oxygenation and, you're, and not focusing on nutrition, adrenal glands, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money pretty much as well. They're not going to help you with the adrenal glands, but there's wonderful things that you can do for the adrenal glands. And by the way, if you have adrenal insufficiency over the course of time, your thyroid will begin to slow down. And from that point forward, from adrenal thyroid issues, from that point forward, every single system in the body can become compromised, including cardiovascular health. So it's really, really, really important that you get to the bottom of this uh, uh, bottom of this issue for anybody who's dealing with adrenal problems. That is, work on the digestive system, work on the blood sugar system, and then focus specifically on nutrients for the adrenal glands, as well as respiration, oxygenation, inhal- inhalation, as well as exhalation. Thanks so much for calling, Heather. Hope we helped you out. We don't think about vitamin C deficiency as being an issue because most people get the RDA, recommended daily allowance or ridiculous deprivation allowance of vitamin C, which is 60 milligrams a day. Remember, a a rat is making the equivalent of 10 grams of vitamin C a day. A billy goat is making a lot more than that, and a cow is making a lot more than that, and more when they're under stress. They're going to tell us that we only need 60 milligrams of vitamin C, a one one hundredth of what a rat makes. Vitamin C also has a stabilizing effect on stress hormones, on cortisol, And it can reduce some of the negative effects associated with caffeine if you're drinking lots of Coke or eating lots of sugar, having problems with insomnia or anxiety or jitteriness or any kind of adrenal gland suppression. Vitamin C can be helped, uh, can be helpful. Vitamin C can be thought of as an adrenal gland support vitamin and and given vitamin C's anti-stress roles, this should come as no surprise. A couple days ago, Glenn Beck was in the news. He said he's really, really sick. What, What do you have wrong with him? He's got something called adrenal fatigue which most people listening to this show have heard of, but is still considered to be kind of weird and quackery uh, by mainstream medicine. Adrenal fatigue is just when your body is under so much duress that your adrenal glands can no longer provide you with the anti-stress hormones to keep you going. And, of course, they get, your adrenal glands get pooped out, just like other systems get pooped out. These days, it's a, pretty much impossible not to have some degree of adrenal fatigue. And if you're interested in protecting yourself, get yourself on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which will give you 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C per two doses. If you're trying to get by on the minimum, uh, the recommended daily allowance, the RDA of vitamin C, that's not even going to be a drop in the bucket. 60 milligrams of vitamin C is, is not even going to touch an adrenal fatigue issue. Remember, vitamin C is also important for building connective tissue, which forms 50% of the body. There's other nutrients that are important for adrenal health. Zinc, as I say, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate is very important for the adrenal glands. If vitamin C is the main vitamin for the adrenal glands, zinc is probably the most important mineral for the adrenal glands, along with magnesium and perhaps copper as well. As far as the B vitamins go, vitamin B12 is epic when it comes to a, a supporting the stress response. Again, vitamin B12 deficiencies, like vitamin C deficiencies, are probably not uncommon. Vitamin B5 is also important for the adrenal glands. If you're dealing with any kind of fat issues, uh, fat hormone issues, estrogen issues, testosterone issues, especially hot flashes as you get older, or maybe excess secretion of skin oils, vitamin B5 plays a major role in how the body handles fats and how the body makes fatty hormones, adrenal fatty hormones like estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. But no nutrient is more important for the adrenal glands than vitamin C. All right, David in Florida, are you there, buddy? Yes. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, uh, completely exhausted from adrenal suppression, probably about three years, and it doesn't even show up on the labs. As okay. You might figure um, full fight or flight mode, um, All right. sleep or fragmented sleep. You want some help with that? 
Yeah, they prescribed Neurontin. Is that because they're boneheads? Therapy. Why would you put a drug in an already compromised body, David? Does this make sense? What the heck are these people thinking? Neurontin, by the way, is one of the most awful of all pharmaceutical drugs, and there's lots of awful ones, and that's near the top of the list. Why the heck would somebody take a, a, a patient? Why would a medical professional who's sworn to do no harm? Take a, a compromised patient who's already stressed out, who's already got problems, and now put a poison in the body that now you have to do more work to clear out, put more load on the body. This is the idiocy of the medical model. So here's the deal. First of all, whether it shows up on a, a test or not is, is really not relevant, and it just underscores what I was talking about earlier, the uselessness of diagnostics. It doesn't matter what a test tells you, David. It matters how you feel. Now, I don't know necessarily that it's your fatigue is an adrenal problem, although obviously if you have fatigue, the adrenal glands are going to be involved because they're your energy glands. But here's what you need to recognize, David, and everybody listening. If you have adrenal issues, they follow blood sugar issues and they follow digestive issues. You can't, attract, you can't approach adrenal health without approaching the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, and then ultimately digestive health issues. You want to throw in one more thing, oxygen is also, or lack of oxygen, poor breathing techniques is also a problem when it comes to adrenal health issues. So here's the, what you need to do. For all adrenal health issues, number one, first and foremost, start to practice deep breathing techniques. That alone will stabilize the adrenal glands. Just that alone, just sitting on the couch and practicing slow, deep breathing. And I emphasize the word slow. If you do it too fast, it throws everything off. So 10 or 15 seconds on the inhale, through the nose, 10 or 15 seconds on the exhale, again, through the nose. That's first and foremost. If you want to... uh, get a little help with that, go get an app called Bio Breathing or My Calm Beat, which you can get off uh, Android or, or get for your Android phone or for your iPhone. Uh, so that's step number one. Step number two is going to be to stabilize the blood sugar. When you go into low blood sugar, which follows high blood sugar, your adrenal glands will pick up the slack, the energy slack, and that will put another burden on the adrenal glands. So making sure you're keeping your blood sugar stable by eating more coconut oil, more protein, using nutrients that help the body process sugar, the B-complex, vitamin B1 and B3 are, are superstar sugar, sugar metabolizing vitamins. Vitamin C can be helpful as well. Electrolytes can be very helpful for stabilizing blood sugar and also for the adrenal glands. And by the way, nutrients that help you stabilize blood sugar also tend to help you with the adrenal glands. So you'll, uh, you'll uh, uh, take care of two, two of the uh, causes of your adrenal health issues by using these blood, stabili- blood sugar stabilizing techniques. Uh, chromium, vanadium, and magnesium are all superstar sugar metabolizing nutrients. Get yourself on the sweeties, sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, more fiber, drink water after all your uh, sweet meals, starchy meals, drink water first thing in the morning when your blood sugar tends to be concentrated. All of these are strategies for stabilizing the blood sugar and then helping the adrenal glands. Then finally, last but most certainly not least, eliminating the entrance of toxins into the body through the digestive tract, eating less food, doing a food holiday, staying away from processed foods and toxic foods and and processed fats and doing a food diary and especially staying away from foods that trigger digestive symptoms, uh, loose stools, bowel movement problems, gas, bloating, constipation, etc. So you got major techniques there, none of which involve a doctor. You can do them all yourself. If you want to throw one last thing in there, there are nutrients that are specific for the adrenal glands, especially zinc and vitamin C and vitamin B12. In fact, if you're positive that you have an adrenal health issue, you may want to consider vitamin B12 shots just to make sure you're getting enough vitamin B12. As our digestive system starts to break down over time, we don't absorb our vitamin B12. So getting your B12 in injections might be a good idea. So lots of things you could do there, David, and you don't need a doctor for any of them. Uh, Just sit on your couch, practice your deep breathing, get on your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, use the sweeties, change the way you eat and then correct any kinds of digestive health issues and eliminating problem foods, et cetera. That's what I'd be doing if I were you. Anything else, bro? Sounds like common sense. Thank you. It, right? It's exactly what it is, David. It's common sense. It's not complicated. Thanks for your call, man. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Good luck. Have a beautiful day. That's exactly what it is. It's common sense. You guys, health is common sense.